installment three of my Quiz Bowl Primer Nuts and Bolts, what you need to do, actually do for the rubber to hit the road and get a team up and running at your school. In many ways, forming a team is the greatest hurdle. I have a hard time at Eastside in recruiting players, and it's probably my biggest problem, and one of the reasons why I am most eager for middle schools to develop a program so that they students maybe can come into high school already familiar with the activity uh, in the same way that they are for all these other activities like band and sports and things of that nature. But um, it's because they either A, don't know about the activity, B, um, it's overwhelming and they, they don't want to put in time to become good and they know so little from the start. Uh, even good students who make all A's, and I put this in bold, are shocked when they come to practice and see just how little they know, and more so are overwhelmed when they see other students who do. Um, a lot of the problem is that students very often don't learn to, to retain information or for information, but rather just to make a good grade and then they forget. Um, I've made announcements, put uh, team posters on the wall, uh, asked uh, teachers to make recommendations, things like that. But the thing that works best of all is just simply word of mouth. Once you have a core group, and this is an important statement, uh, that become dedicated and successful, things grow because a huge appeal of the activity is not in and of itself, even though it is fun, but rather, as with any other activity in high school, the camaraderie and the sense of belonging and the sense of friendship that comes along with it. Um, a, a wide variety of students uh, uh, are attracted to it, which is good. Uh, and the student doesn't need to be super bright or a super good student. They just simply, as I say, need to like learning stuff and find the game fun. And if you can find students like that, you will have a, a fun and a um, successful program in, in at least some, some senses of the word successful. Um, how do you get them to commit to the activity? Um, you have to explain to them that one, the activity becomes more fun when they are better at it, uh, when they are more successful, when they win more than they lose. But it requires long independent hours and it's no different than sports or band. If you wanna be good at an instrument, you have to dedicate yourself to becoming good. Now, just like you'll find in band, tons and tons of mediocre or even bad players, you'll find tons and tons of mediocre bad quiz bowlers but you really want to enjoy the game. You really want to reap the fruits of it. Um, you, you need to understand that it is a long, slow, and sometimes tedious process uh, to get really, really good. And it's just investment of time. Um, you, you, again, find a student who is curious about the world and they will become good at Quiz Bowl if they want to. And I, I, the living proof was uh, my, my team of the last three years. Um, the, the core of three boys uh, really, really dedicated themselves and became, uh, I think, one of the two, three best teams in the state of Georgia. Uh, and, and man, it was so much fun. All right. So let's talk about practice. First and foremost, you go to practice and it's overwhelming, just overwhelming of how much stuff there is and how do they know it and how do they know it so fast? Well, there is a process and it first starts with previous question sets. In Quiz Bowl, there is a canon, C-A-N-O-N, -N, of information that you will see comes up again and again. And because of this, you have opportunity for students to kind of assemble this information in their mind, in their brain, simply by exposure to it. Now, quickly, before the days of the internet, the haves and have nots divide was chasmic simply because the teams that had established programs and thus a voluminous library of previous questions, a voluminous library of previous tournament sets were at such an advantage over those that were starting out simply because they just didn't have the resources. And so what you can see is that with the internet, all of a sudden, it's an equal basis. And so one of the best ways to first start out is simply by reading quiz bowl questions. And when you read quiz bowl questions, you start to see the canon emerge. You start to see stuff that is asked about again. Your curiosity hopefully is piqued. And in that way, it will start to grow your web of information in your brain. And so here you can see the website. Now, if you go to hsquizbowl.org, right here, you'll see tournament database, 
you'll see forums and Quiz Bowl Packet Archive. The Packet Archive is the thing that can help you be on the road to becoming a good Quiz Bowl player. Because when you click on it, you see that this is the high school archive. There's also middle school, collegiate, and trash. Remember, trash just means popular culture. Uh, but for high school, it is voluminous. Every one of these links indicates a full tournament question set that was a house right. And of course, it gives the year right next to it. I would always try to stay a little bit more current within your last 10 years or so that you can see here. But uh, when you click on any of these question sets, uh, here's the one that Eastside hosted in January of 2020. It comes up with all of the packets that are there. All you got to do is click on it and you can go ahead and begin reading the toss ups and bonuses and get a sense as to what comes up over and over again. So for middle school, there are many fewer simply because it is not as uh, um, prevalent in all around. But as you can still see, there is still stuff that's available to you uh, to kind of check out. Um, particularly, let me point out uh, one that you could take a look at. It's uh, called Sages, uh, Spring Academic Game for Elementary Students 2. I went ahead and opened up a packet of them so you can see that here, uh, that's that's the, the first one and they start asking questions and you get a sense as to what, uh, what they're asking about. And the, the answer should be kind of, you know, um, uh, accessible. Like, look at number three. Plasma is ejected from this celestial body, and its namesake wind. This body has namesake spots, which are cooler than surrounding regions. This body ejects namesake flares. I think we all kind of know what the answer is, but look at the one that's finally at the end. Name the star at the center of the solar system. But I like to play along and kind of just simply see where I would get it right. These two men developed the first steerable rudder of Control Yaw. They owned a bicycle. Stop. I know the answer now. It's the Wright Brothers. And so I go ahead and finish reading. Oh, there it is. This statue may represent Dante sitting at, oh, I know that. It's the thinker. And oh, there you go. Wow, look, I'm really great on elementary school questions. But um, this is a way by which you get a sense. And you can go through uh, and read the toss-ups and then obviously move on and take a look at the bonuses and see uh, what comes up. And I always tell my players to get a notebook specifically dedicated to Quiz Bowl and write down things you don't know. Write down stuff that seem interesting to you. Write down stuff that you think that you should know. And hopefully that will then start you on your route to becoming a better player. Now, starting small. No student to the game that's new can become immediately good. There's just too much stuff. It's too broad. It's too overwhelming. So I encourage players to start small with small cannons. By that I mean the big three, lit, history, and science. There is so much literature. There is so much history, so much science. Versus take sociology. There's not that much. Or psychology. There's not that much. And start with a small area, focus on that, and then move on. So for example, I usually tell students, pick one of the big three and try to concentrate on that. So for example, this team that we've just had, the best in East Side's history, Braxton Buff focused on literature. He made flashcards for authors and flashcards for works. Uh, and before him, Catherine Oliver did the same. Before her, Kayla Kennedy did the same. And so in that way, that becomes his area. Same thing, history. That was Jet's area. Science, that was Ethan's area. And we could count on them on getting those questions right. In addition to that, Braxton picked up philosophy. He would get philosophy. It was just his thing. Um, Ethan also picked up religion. It was, it was his thing. And so in that way, you pick an area and you can be counted on for that particular area. And so in that way, that's how you do it. Also too, if let's say you were to tackle literature, and the reason why I like to push literature onto students is that for all intents and purposes, you can become a decent history player by retaining the stuff you encounter in school. You can become a decent science player by retaining somewhat. You need to really study a little bit more. But literature, because you read and are exposed to so little in the course of high school, it's a way by which you can become good comparative to your average quiz bowl player a lot faster. I also say to my students starting out, let's learn fine arts first. The reason being is because nobody for all intents and purposes learns fine arts in school. That is something you really have to pick up on your own. And so I have these wonderful study guides for fine arts. I have a PowerPoint in which I go through art. And if you learn that PowerPoint, 
tweaks that I've made, uh, you will get 98% of all visual stuff that comes up, art and sculpture. And the same thing, I also have a PowerPoint that I made for music. And I can tell you now, even though in a quiz bowl round, you might only get one fine arts question, you're guaranteed to get it. And you can learn the fine arts in a, well, to a point where you get 90% of the questions that come up, uh, you know, within a few weeks, even if you wanted to. And so you can really excel and get better rapidly. All right. So the second thing would be quiz DB. Quiz DB might be the single most helpful thing ever for improving at quiz bowl. That's it. It just really is. So you've got your notebook of all the things that you've written down over the course of practice, of the course of reading quiz bowl questions uh, that you don't know. And so what you do is you then go to quiz DB. Now, here it is. So let's say uh, I currently this summer and last reading the rabbit novels by John Updike. And so um, let's say I want to see John up. Uh, and so into this website is downloaded all of those packets of questions that you've seen, all the middle school questions, all of the high school question sets, all of even the collegiate question sets have all been uploaded to QuizDB. Now, you can say, I want only John Updike as the answer in geography questions. Nothing's going to come up. He's an author. So it's literature. So I just leave that as everything. Um, I want to see it as the answer, but if I wanted to see how many times John Updike came up in the question itself, I could include that as well as the answer. Uh, difficulty is important because here I want, does he come up in middle school sets? I want to see all the times he's come up in easy high school sets, regular high school sets, hards high school sets, national high school sets, and I even want to see him in easy college because I'm a high school player. But if you wanted to limit it to only middle school and easy high school, you could certainly do that. And then what you do is that you could indicate, I want it only be toss up, but here we're going to go with all toss ups and bonuses all the time that John Updike was an answer line. And don't worry about the tournament. This just lists out all the tournaments that are available in this web. Oh my Lord. It's just so many. It is voluminous to be sure. So here you click on it and how about that? You go and you see 11 toss ups were found. And what you do is when you read these toss ups, you kind of see the same clues come up for John Updike, particularly famous for writing the Rabbit series. But that's not all. He wrote Witches of Eastwick. You might want to make note of that. Uh, you can see here this George Caldwell in the Centaur. Look at the next one. Uh, here he mentions a character from Rabbit Run, Jack Eccles, Marty Tothero, uh, Rebecca drowning in a bathtub. Uh, you go to the next one and there's Tothero again. And here you have his affair with Ruth Leonard in the Rabbit series. And you can just simply see the clues that come up again and again. And there you see again the same guy, the the, the minister Jack Eccles, uh, the Marty Tothero, his coach, uh, and so forth and so on. But so 11, that, that, that John Updike is, you know, worthy to know. However, let's go ahead and put in somebody, let's say, let's keep it with American literature, Emily Dickinson. All right, so I'm going to keep the same parameters of difficulty, and let's click on her. Dickinson. 50 toss-ups. Let's load them all. And so here you get a sense of, oh my heavens, I would probably need to know Emily Dickinson more than I need to know John Updike, because she's more common to be asked about in all of these question sets in all of these tournaments and it tells you exactly where it came from and the 2013 bhsat remember that's the question set produced by yale's quiz bowl team there she is and then she comes up again in 2014 in the scope novice so there it is there it is of course uh, in every single tournament tells you exactly what it's coming from and how often she's come up 50 times from that is there. This really is how a player can become great. What my players did is that they kept note cards and from the clues that they would see coming up again and again, they would write it on that note card and the various items that would be important to know. And sometimes they would refer to power clues. Power clues are the stuff that is in bold. Uh, a power clue is a clue that seems to come up a lot when it would be available to get the question right and get 15 points for it. So if you answer the question up to the point of the asterisk, you get 15. Up to the point of the asterisk, you get 15. And so I remember I was in the Villa Borghese uh, in June of 2019, 
And I was standing in front of a, I think it was Sacred and Profane Love, uh, a painting by, I think, Titian. And um, let's see if that's right. Sacred and Profane Love. There it is. And we're going to make it to where it is actually in the question itself, along with the answer. Let's see what comes up. I think it's a painting by Titian. And I hit enter. Yep, there we are. Uh, not quite yet. So let me hit enter again. Search. It might take a while. Oh, there it is. It's loading questions. So I apologize for the delay. But my point is this. As I was standing in front of the painting, talking to some of my students, uh, I said that this right here, this is a jet power clue in that uh, sacred and profane love. Here it is as the answer is Titian. So we were standing in front of that and, um, you know, I said, this this is a Jed Power clue. I was joking, of course, uh, but nevertheless, um, you kind of can see the, the sorts of things that, that come up again and again, that there it is. So at any rate, QuizDB, it is a, a way that you can go through all of these question sets and really focus in on something particular. All right, so let's move on. Scope, I mentioned it before, it is a question set that is produced every year since 2009. And it is designed particularly for novice high school, but they also produce a middle school set from the same questions, they just modify them. So here you can see for scope, uh, it's uh, scope-qb.org, and it tells you what they're all about. And so uh, here, taking a second, there we are. Uh, here you can see you know, what they are doing and why they're doing it. All of the question sets are over here, including uh, the 2014-15 middle school set, 15-16 middle school set. So you can also find uh, this in the um, the Quiz Bowl archive. So you just look for middle school, and there you can see the Scope MS-8 uh, and Scope MS-9, Scope MS-10, meaning middle school set. Uh, and they have some really good study sheets that you have here that you can start out with right here and kind of learn some stuff. So uh, let's look at your subatomic particles cheat sheet. So just checking it out there. And electron, neutron, proton, quark, lepton, photon, it kind of gives you a sense as to what it is. Uh, and they even indicate in their question set how often uh, the, the stuff occurs frequently. So uh, bolded terms which appear frequently in toss-ups. So things like, you know, flavors, baryon, strong force, it's quark. And so uh, kind of things that you can kind of listen for and, and hopefully uh, remember and then, and then get right. Um, but nevertheless, so you have that resource that you can go through and NAQT. So I'm going to devote the last part of this installment to NAQT and how they can really help you uh, get on track. So um, NAQT, if you click on it here, as you can see right up here, start a team, middle school, starting a middle school team. And it walks you through it, exactly what you need to do, a lot of the stuff that I've been talking about, uh, recruiting players, acquiring practice material, secure funding, and so forth and so on. Now, all of NAQT's questions, you, of course, have to purchase them. But once you do, uh, you have your own personal uh, kind of quiz bowl database, just like you have here available for um, everybody to be able to have. Because I have signed up teams to play at tournaments uh, at using these question sets, here you can see uh, I have now the availability to click on any one of these and access the questions. Uh, and the reason being is because uh, we've, we've paid for them. We paid the money to attend the tournament uh, in which these questions were read. Some of these uh, question sets, like the ones that were the high school, I actually purchased them so that we can prepare for the high school championships that we have attended over the years. Uh, I actually purchased these frequency lists so you can make all kinds of purchases from NAQT in order to be able to obviously uh, study uh, and make sure it's available to your team, as it were. But uh, NAQT absolutely uh, invaluable. But uh, as a player individually, I find it to be helpful with the You Gotta Know. The You Gotta Know articles are just absolutely wonderful and uh, interesting way that you can learn new stuff. So when you click on it, every single month, NAQT makes a You Gotta Know sheet, essentially a little thing about these are what you need to know when it comes to quiz bowl and the stuff that comes up. So let's go and pick something interesting. Let's go with, let's go with skyscrapers. That's interesting. So I click on that. And these are the skyscrapers that might ever appear. Now, that maybe would appear two or three times over your whole quiz bowl career, the Burj Khalifa or Empire State Building, or as you can see, all the other things that are here. 
uh, the shard, uh, which comes up a lot in uh, London uh, toss ups like, uh, you know, this city, blah, 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 this city, home of the shard. And you know that it's London. And then the same thing with uh, Patronus Towers. Uh, um, you know, I, I got a toss up uh, recently uh, in which um, the 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 answer was Malaysia. But I heard the word Patronus and I knew where Patronus Towers were. I knew that it was in Kuala Lumpur. And so I was able to get Malaysia because I knew about the Patronus Towers. But at any rate, um, it's just simply a way by which you can focus individually, small packetized uh, things to get uh, better about them. And so if you just don't want to go chronologically, you can go browse by category. And so you can see uh, whatever you want to focus on. And I mentioned earlier, um, like small canons for all intents and purposes. Um, these are the only anthropologists you ever need to know, period. And really, I do mean period. Uh, and, you know, uh, anthropologist or something in anthropology might come up once a tournament. But really, if you learn just this one page, you're guaranteed to get that right, most likely. Uh, you know, I had a player uh, who uh, learned as anthropologist and Lord knows when he, he didn't, you know, get overwhelming number of questions right over the course of a tournament. But when that came up, he was all on top of it. And so that way, again, you can smart start small uh, and really focus in. Uh, instead of just the big three, because if you click on social science, as you can see, uh, not that many, you know, just four of them that are here. Same thing with psychology. You can get most psychology questions uh, when just simply looking at this sort of stuff that is here, um, at least more than half, I'm sure. Uh, compare that to, of course, history and then look at it, voluminous. I mean, history is just so much more vast. Literature is, is more vast uh, than obviously other things. So um, that is another way by which you can become uh, better using the you gotta know. All right, so one more thing uh, that's available should you so wish it uh, is that here I'm going to click and I'm going to type in Latin EHS right there. And so what comes up is a side Latin, a third item, and there it is. That's my website. And you click on academic team and there it is. Now I mentioned this before, but um, you can in art and music particularly, get really good really fast by learning what's in my two PowerPoints. So you can see it here, Art for Quiz Bowl, PowerPoint, updated December 2018, and Music for Quiz Bowl, PowerPoint, PPTX, December 2018. And when you click on them, there it is. And this is for, mainly for the high school level, you won't see as much. It is 343 slides, but you can really, if you were to learn all of the stuff that's here for the most part, and you can see a lot of it is actually repetitive, so it's not really 343, and it's chronological, and it goes all the way through, uh, so you can see you know, catching up to here, uh, Impressionism, you ever hear a painter that's going to be having talking about uh, ballerinas and racehorses? As your man, Edgar Degas. Nevertheless, oh, that's my favorite uh, painting by Degas, and maybe of all Impressionism, but nevertheless, um, you know, it, it just really walks you through uh, what you need to know when it comes to art in Quiz Bowl. And, um, you know, I promise you this, at, at, at the varsity level, regular level, high school Quiz Bowl, uh, and really maybe even at the national championship level, you learn what's in my PowerPoint that's here, uh, you will get 99, 95 to 99% of all Quiz Bowl questions uh, that come up in high school quiz bowl from just simply my two PowerPoints. And so that's a good way by which you can guarantee yourself several uh, questions every round. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out as well, that it's a resource uh, that you can you can use. Uh, also, one more thing is that uh, quizzes from packet. I started a while back uh, to try and make uh, packets of information just to kind of walk you through stuff. Uh, but um, you know, like for example, my philosophy packet that is here, I basically, if you want to learn philosophy, learn this right here essentially. Uh, it's uh, 16 pages long. I go through it again chronologically, important uh, philosophers, uh, what they did, what they wrote, what they were all about, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. At the very beginning of it, I uh, have like a little bit of a, uh, a kind of a, uh, you hear blank, you buzz in with blank. Like you hear like 17th century, optimism, monads, you're going to say Gottfried Leibniz. Uh, you're going to, you know, being in time, Heidegger. Uh, Summa Theologica, St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, the quote, God is dead, that's Nietzsche. Uh, structural anthropology, I think that's Levi Strauss. Um, but at any rate, uh, this is the, the that existentialism, either or, you know, Kierkegaard, 
So, uh, you know, th this is kind of a, mm, it's a, somewhat of an out of date way of studying, but uh, perhaps that could be of help to you. So um, there are a lot of resources out there. Uh, essentially, what you have to do is, like I say, uh, start small uh, a little bit of a time. Like, for example, this past year, what I did is that I signed a You Got a Note article a week for each of the students, uh, and th that was their study for that week, uh, a schedule that they made, uh, keeping a notebook, using that notebook to go and quiz DB stuff, making sure in that notebook you write down the stuff that you learn or find interesting, didn't know uh, from question sets that you've read. And over time, it's not going to be overnight, but over time, uh, you will see success. Uh, you will get better. I want to give one last example, and I don't want this to turn on too long, but to show you what I mean. In that, um, take Jet. Jet showed up in my class as a sophomore and began playing Quiz Bowl as a sophomore. And one of the tournaments that he played as a sophomore was the North Atlantic Classic. All right, so now I want to show you this. So there it is, the North Atlanta High School Quiz Bowl Classic. 2018, he was a sophomore. So I click on that. I click on Combined. I'm just going to bring up the stats is all that it is. Look at Individuals and Control-F, Jet. He's 58th. He averaged 20 points per match, which means that every match or so, he's getting two toss-ups, essentially. So, not too hot, but, you know, not awful. It's respectable, certainly. If you had everybody on your team averaging 20 per match, that's, that's pretty all right. Uh, you'll win more than you lose, but it's a far, far cry from the top. And these guys are putting up 72 points per match. Um, you know, 31 powers. That's when you answer the question early and get 15. It's called a power toss up and 19 just for 10. And so, you know, just racking up so many toss ups and things of that nature. So let's go back, go back again. So that was in 2018. Then I showed to Jet those study resources. He got we're making flashcards. He learned the, especially, um, the fine arts, and he, he jumped on that history train. He wrote down stuff. He really started studying, and then the next year goes back to the same tournament. One year later, one year later, click on individuals, and look where he's living. Up at the top, 70 points per game almost. And if you look at the prelims, he actually was the best in the prelims, I think. Let me go back and one more. And the, the prelims in the morning, uh, not the playoffs combined, but in the prelims, individuals, there he is, 81 points per match it, did he average, and it was one year later. So quite a transformation, so it shows you that it's something that certainly can be done, uh, and certainly um, with hard work, you can become a great player, and it's a way by which you can start, start small, but expand, keep at it, and you become a great, great player, which, of course, Jet did uh, in many ways might be the, if not, he is the best player uh, that we've ever had at Eastside. And he just turned it around in a singular year. And so certainly you and your players uh, can can certainly do the same.